My name is Michele Ferrario. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Stash Away. I've gone through three bear markets that I really remember, of which the first one I was not yet working. Hi, my name is Stephanie Lang, and I'm the co-chief investment officer at Stash Away. Number of bear markets, four. Hi, I'm Nandini Joshi. I'm the CEO at Stash Away. I've gone through four bear markets in my life so far. Hello, my name is Alex. I'm the Chief Product Officer here at Stashaway, and I've been through three bear markets. The first bear market was uh, the tech uh, crash in 2001, but at the time I was still at university. So the real first bear market uh, that I remember as somebody with savings that where I had to make decisions was the global financial crisis in 2008. So I actually try to study as many bear markets as possible because the first bear market actually happened in 1692, which is way beyond our lifetime. But the actual first market I experienced was actually the tech bubble burst in year 2000. So my first bear market was in 2000. I had just graduated and joined a tech company. Uh, and obviously as the tech bubble burst, uh, my company's stock went from $63 to $13 uh, in just a span of uh, less than three months. So my first experience in a bear market was actually during 2007 through 2009. In fact, I was just trying to uh, find my first job beginning in finance and trading specifically. And at the time, I was really at the epicenter of the crisis because I was working at McKinsey in New York uh, and I was actually advising one of the largest global banks, which obviously was at the very center of the crisis. And so I saw the markets go down and banks in kind of gigantic crisis. I saw the markets rebound. I did not have an investment plan back then. I was kind of a bit more casual in, my, in managing my savings. And uh, I kind of watched the market go down and up without doing much. And looking back over the last 15 years, I've been thinking that, that I lost a gigantic opportunity. As, you know, as of late 2022, if I had invested during the bottoming in early 2009, uh, I would have made somewhere around 600% returns on whatever investment I made. So back then, I was just graduating from university with a computer engineering degree. Instead of getting the 15 job offers that we were all hoping for, companies were all cutting back aggressively on hiring if they weren't going bust. Luckily, I was still early in my career, and I decided that the best thing for me to do is actually invest in my own education. So I went on and got a master's degree in computer science uh, from Stanford you know, not knowing whether I would have a job uh, going forward, what that uncertainty meant, um, was it make me a really big saver. But uh, as soon as I did have a little bit of money saved up, uh, I didn't want to leave it in the, in the account. So I started to work on my real estate investment since that's what I really understood. So that was my first investment I made and I, and I stuck to it to, to manage through a few years. The second thing I learned was that I have to think about how my skill sets grow because investments weren't really going, you know, as they do in a bull market. So the only way to really increase your savings or to improve your financial health was to actually improve your income. And that had to come from skill set. During that time, I actually spent a lot of time learning uh, about investment approaches and history, uh, reading about previous bear markets and forming my own views about uh, investments and different approaches to investing and how to think about a financial plan as well. I mean, my experience in the global financial crisis bear market where I lost an opportunity shapes very significantly the way I think about investments today. There are actually two types of bear markets. One type are more transient and they tend to only affect financial assets. The other type is much broader and they tend to affect the whole economy and many lives. Eventually all of them come to pass, but the latter one may have lasting impact on your life if you're not well prepared for it. The current bear market is likely to be one of these that have broader effects. And we may see its impact on our personal lives as well. So take it seriously and plan and make sure that your finances are sound to live through this bear market. 
The second market crash and subsequently the bear market that I went through was the global financial crisis. So I continued actually to invest throughout the GFC because having learned previously uh, during the dot-com burst, I knew that I still had multiple decades ahead of me and so this wasn't money that I needed um, now. I wanted to make sure that I didn't make short-term decisions on it. The money that I invested actually during GFC has paid out a lot in the long term for me because obviously once the market you know, went up, um, I was fully invested uh, and I didn't have to do anything to make sure I got the upside as well. At the end of the day, I'm a big believer in history repeating itself. Uh, having said that, I still continue to learn each and every day, uh, keep my finger on the pulse when it comes to what's going on in the markets and interacting with the investment teams. But through this learning and coming up with my own framework of thinking and decision making, uh, it helps me form views which um, do not get impacted by the short and midterm. So at the end of the day, these help me sleep better and I'm trying to invest with high cadence, high frequency. Uh, in practice, I invest once a week in a diversified portfolio uh, across asset classes. I have different risk profiles, but I, I try, uh, I'm trying actually right now to invest more on the equity uh, side with a long-term view. I know it might get worse before it gets better. I know that in a month, three months, six months, I might lose money versus what I'm doing today, but I know that Investing at the exact bottom is impossible. And the next best thing is to invest across the way down and across the way up. This time, um, you know, it's been 20 years almost that I've been uh, investing and, uh, and saving. Um, so I had the opportunity to think about private markets. I've uh, dabbled a little bit in private markets in the past due to uh, exposure from a job. But this time I really wanted to make a strong allocation in my portfolio towards it. And I also started to work on art investment actually in 2020, um, which I've found to be, you know, a personal passion, so a small allocation towards it. But one thing, you know, as my life uh, stages, stage is very different, uh, I have two kids. I did increase an allocation to my Stash Away Simple, where I manage my emergency fund because it's just something that gives me peace of mind, so I did bump it up by about 15% this time. Uh, I think uh, there is a famous quote from Warren Buffett, uh, you know, be greedy when others are fearful and fearful when others are greedy. I think it's designed exactly for the type of markets where we're going to be, where we are now, we're going to be potentially for some time in the future. Nobody knows how long it will last. Everybody believes that one day will stop and markets will rebound. And if you have a long enough time frame and you have a structured enough thinking about your investments so that you're not risking more than you can afford to risk, but you're simply putting at work some of your extra savings, this is a great chance to enter the markets when the markets are not overpriced. Actually, if you're going through your first bear market, don't worry. You don't need to actually go through a bear market to learn from its lessons. There are many bear markets in history that we can take reference from. And a lot of times, if you look at bear markets, the rise and fall of markets are primarily driven by liquidity. If you're going through your first bear market, or you just want to study up on history, a book that I would highly recommend is Ray Dalio's Principles for Navigating Big Debt Crisis where he's painstakingly documented over 50 cases of debt crises in the past 100 years. It's absolutely fine to be feeling nervous. Having said that, continue to learn, absorb knowledge. Look at Bloomberg, look at FT, also look at Reddit, look at your favorite influencers, look at any private publications you go to, and form your own view. If you hear somebody saying they know the answer, especially if they're not qualified to do so, I would be wary, I would be conscious about it and validate that information in other ways. My advice is very simple, is to, is to think about the decades that you have, have ahead. Um, if you have fewer decades, you know, make sure you take your, make your decisions accordingly. But if you have multiple decades, this is really an opportunity in front of you. So invest early and invest regularly.